All right, guys, we have this 1994 Club Car DS with this. It looks like a body wrap. I'm not sure, actually, if it's a body wrap or a paint job. Okay, yeah, it's definitely a body wrap. It's got nice flames on it. Too bad it, they weren't real flames because they should just be burned. <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, 94 Club Car DS. It has a starter generator issue. It's actually not cranking over like it should. I'll demonstrate that here. We'll put it in neutral, or the service mode in neutral. Oh, yeah, hang on. These things can be tricky sometimes. If they're not just right, they don't work. So we have solenoid click. And I can feel the starter trying to grab and turn, um, but it's it's just not... It's just not cutting it. So if I manually roll the engine over just a little bit, just move it. And now when I step on the pedal, see how it's really weak? And it will eventually start. See how it's kind of like stuttery and even with the belt tightened up, it's not, it's just not rolling the engine over fast enough or strong enough to get it cranked up and running. So there's a problem with that. Uh, I've already done a battery test on it. The battery's okay. I've charged the battery up for 24 hours on a trickle charge. So I know that the, I know the battery's good. I tightened the belt up on the starter generator twice. So we're probably gonna just replace that belt and be done with it. So it's no longer an issue. So we're gonna just change the starter generator. The other thing I've checked was I pulled the caps off the brushes. The brushes are wore down but they're not wore down to the point where they're failing. They still have probably a good 50% of their life remaining. There is issues internally on the starter generator. It's just weak. So we're gonna change it out and put a new one in and uh, I'll show you how we do that. All right, so this one does not have a back seat on it, which is pretty nice. Makes it a lot easier to work on. So this is a rarity. We're gonna take our access panel off. You can use a regular screwdriver. Nine times out of 10, these just slip right off. And then here you go, you can see, here's our starter generator right here. So you have 9 16 nuts and bolts on the swing arm, and then a half inch carriage bolt, half inch nut and carriage bolt down here on the adjuster rail. Usually these, once you loosen them up, you can usually get these apart by hand. Oh, see, this one's not cooperating. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah, that one's coming apart very easily now. Okay. What I like to do is I like to leave the bolt through the hole there until we get everything ready to come out completely and then I'll take the bolts out. That way nothing just, it doesn't just fall apart like I did when I dropped that nut. Now this should slip right out, which it does. Belt comes off. And I'll take that nut out, or I'm sorry, that bolt. Take that bolt out. And remember, you're not doing it right unless you drop everything on the floor. All right, so to get the nuts off of the starter generator, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter and an eight millimeter. So 10 millimeter for the 12 volt switched circuit, which is this one here. And then your ground. which is here. I think we're gonna change this cable because that looks like it's seen better days. Looks like it's gotten quite warm too. The, um, the field and armature connection cable you don't have to change, which is that other, that other cable right there. This one here, you don't have to change that one unless you're, you're feeling like it. And then this is your charge circuit, which is the eight millimeter. Uh, 
And this has been an experience I've had on some other carts that I've worked on. If you remember the back, my, one of my older videos, you'll see the the Turf 2, the carry-all, the XR Team gas cart. That one had experienced very similar symptoms as this one. I put a starter generator in it and it was fine. Okay, there's the out with the old. Now, like I said, this cable here, this end is a bit weak, so we're gonna put a new end on it. Okay, now this one does not come with the field and armature bridge wire, so we have to put it on because it can be wired clockwise or counterclockwise. And this is part number MOT2005-2005. And it'll work on the club car precedent and DS. And this one can be wired for both clockwise and counterclockwise rotation, but it's not for the Subaru motor. We are going to actually take off this link cable. All right, so this one here being a 95 DS, we need to set it up for counterclockwise rotation. So we're gonna have to go A2 to F1. So right here you have A2, which is basically these are the armature connections. And then the side terminals, the large side terminals are the field connections, the field windings. So you have A2, we have to link to F1. On this side, you have your charger output, which goes to the voltage regulator. All right, so that is our link cable connected. Now what I'm gonna do is, because I can get to everything without kind of being lumpy with it, I'm gonna start putting everything back together here. I'm gonna start with our pivot bolts. There's one and two. Put the lock washers on. And then we're gonna put our nuts on. So we're going to also change the belt too because new starter, new belt. Oh, I just have to get this drive belt off, hopefully. So I'll take a screwdriver just to give me a little bit of motivation here and I'll attempt to roll it off the clutch while at the same time rolling it off the clutch or rolling the engine backwards. Sometimes that helps. And this belt looks good, so we're not worried about this one. But this one here, we'll give this one back to the customer. This looks like one of theirs. Would be a spare for them. And this is BLT0011. See how it fits nicely in that, that slot there. Because there's like five different belt skews for the club cars. For the drive belt, or the starter belts anyway. Which is ridiculous, but hey, who am I? I just work here. Oh, drive belt is back on. Okay. All right, now I will also start my, see how much lower this belt brings this generator. See if we can lower this. There we go. There's a little, not loose enough here. Okay, we gotta get a, a bar underneath the, that's not gonna work. Screwdriver method. And this is just to get it close and then raise it up high enough so we can line up our tension bolt here. lock washer and nut, we'll put that on. And we're not tightening anything yet, we're just getting it in place. Typically with this stuff here, these 
these nuts and bolts. I like to get them tight enough to where they don't come loose, but loose enough to where the starter generator can still pivot some. While I get everything shored up here. Okay. And then now we get it cinched up nice and tight. For that, you gotta use whatever you can get in there to make it tight. And over time, it will get loose. You will have to snug it up again. It's just, just the way it is. Okay. Now, when you're putting a bar between the starter generator to get it tight, don't put it between the starter generator and the muffler because you'll squash that exhaust pipe. You want to put it between the starter and the starter bracket, which is where I have it. Okay, that's tight. And the belt tension is good. We have our F2. Charge, charge circuit on. Be sure to drop this eight millimeter nut between the motor and the rear diff because that makes it that much more of a challenge. Okay, and then we tighten these up. They don't have to be, don't go over strenuously tight with this stuff because you will cause damage. Okay, I'll strip it out. All right, so we have enough wire here to where we can. Yeah, this is long enough. Because I'm gonna cut this off right about here, strip it back and put a new ring terminal on. So a four and a six gauge cable crimp here. This looks like to be a four gauge cable. This is six, but our post. Yep, also be sure to drop the new wire connector or wire terminal down between the motor and the diff because that's, that's also fun. Plop this end off right here. See if we can get this off without too much effort. Probably not. All right, so we'll just cut it back a little more. Cut it back to here. Okay, so we have a nice, nice clean copper so we know there's no contamination. So now we'll strip this back about a quarter of an inch. Peel the rubber off. Let's see how this one fits. It's a little large. Let's see if the six gauge will fit on there. Perfect. And it reaches and it doesn't overstretch the cable. So we'll take our cable terminal crimper here and squash it. And that is a good mechanical crimp. The jaws on this are not large enough to crimp the entire connector. So what I typically like to do with this is crimp it a few times up the entire length of the terminal shaft so that way it's fully done. So I want to put some shrink tubing on that. We'll use green just because it's the first one I grabbed. I know and most guys want to use a heat gun but I use a lighter and it's fine. As long as you don't leave it on there too long it won't burn anything. Okay, let that cool for a moment. And now we will install that on the tart the stud there and our lock washer and our nut. Yeah, there's still a lot of cable here. No, it doesn't look like much, but there there is. There's a lot there. I'll make this stand straight up. I can't find my short 10 millimeter 
socket, so I gotta use this extension and be kind of like fumbling with it. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, let's see what happens. See, much different. Now it is gonna have a little bit of a, a wind to it until it breaks itself in. After the brushes break in and they're cut in properly, it will start to quiet down. So that's just something to keep in mind. Let's see if it'll start. So that, that definitely solved our problem. I could have put brushes in it, but it wasn't, it wasn't holding very well, and I knew it wasn't gonna work, since I've attempted that on other carts where the, the starter generator was just wore out. Sometimes you're successful with brushes, but a lot of times, I don't, I don't mean a lot of times, but uh, sometimes, occasionally, you're gonna run into a situation where the starter generator itself is just wore out, and it needs to be completely rebuilt, and for what these things cost, it's just better off just changing them out. Unless you know somebody in your area that can rebuild electric motors, then that might be a viable option, but this is quicker. So it really comes down to how you want to do it, how you want to approach it. For me, I don't have time to take it and wait, so I want to get it in and out of here, so we just change them out. We're now going to reinstall our access panel cover. What is going on here? And these are fine threaded screws and they're enormously long, so usually using a, an electric screwdriver like this just makes it a little bit faster. So, all right guys, that concludes this one here. As you can see, well, it's in, I took it out of service mode. Get the seat back on, covers back on, it fires right up as you see. And a lot of times, some people will diagnose that as a bad battery, but the battery tested okay. So we know the battery's good. We changed the starter generator out and as you've seen, it fired right up. It cranked over as fast as it should. And that's the thing with these motors. If they don't crank fast enough, they're not gonna start. And eventually it will just kill the starter generator. It'll put more strain on the electrical system than necessary. So changing that out, fix the problem. We'll get in touch with the customer, let them know they are good to go. So, all right guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, if you like what I do, try to support me over on Patreon or check out the links in the video's description. Every little bit helps in some small way. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Check the video's description for product links to products I use every single day to bring you these videos and to run my business. Check the links to my social media and websites, Patreon page, etc. And until next time, as always, we will see you in the next video.